basically, we're continuing on now towards the centre of town. Um, we're going to go along the canal um, and then we're going to see a project that's under construction with uh, my colleagues in Sustrans working with the Edinburgh City Council uh, to connect the canal to the Roseburn path. So we'll see a bit of that as well. So yeah, this is National Cycle Network and then we'll be doing, yeah, so we're on NCN 75 now, uh, National Cycle Network 75. We're going to head over to the canal, uh, which is also NC NCN 75. And then we'll be heading on to NCN 1. Uh, so yeah, all of the really great, beautiful scenic links across the city. And I would have loved to have taken us all the way to South Queens Ferry on NCN 76, but we'll see how we go for time. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you leave. All right, so here we go. So here we are on the Union Canal, uh, which goes the whole way from Edinburgh all the way to Glasgow. And yeah, so bits of it are to a very good standard. Other bits of it are not so good and are in need of improvement. What a wonderful little opportunity. Obviously, it's a little narrow it is. at this point. But That's right. again, just to have you know, this as a potential. Yes, yeah, no, it is. It provides such a good, good quality experience for people that we have this sort of problem that we do have user conflict on the path. Sure, sure, when um, it's so small, when it's narrow, yeah. That's right, and yeah. new cycle standards in Scotland would say that you need much bigger width. Really. Oh yeah. Well, that's one of the things that I tell cities when they ask, is say, you know, from a behavior standpoint, what size, what width should we have? And I reply, wider. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and, then, and then whatever you think is, is wide enough, wider than that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's so. a good, good little segue because we're yeah. about to come up to um, an aqueduct where we're actually going to have to dismount because it gets so narrow. It's so narrow, um, yeah. I don't want you to, <laughs> yeah, to yeah. fall into yeah. the canal. So. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get that chilly. That's right. <laughs> No, that is not what we want from your trip to Scotland. Okay, here we go. You know, the Americans, the voters, were like they can start to see, oh wow, if we have alternative modes, additional mobility choices, this could be a good thing for us as drivers too. Yeah, and so do you, have you sensed a bit of a shift in people's thinking? Oh, over? definitely. See, I think we've got yeah. similar issues here in, in Scotland. So yeah. we've got, um, you, the, you know, the government's quite committed to walking and cycling to this agenda. Um, up until recently, I don't know if you heard in the States, but um, we did have a, the Greens in a coalition government yeah. here in Scotland. Yeah, yeah. With the Scottish National Party, but... Um, yeah, that coalition has come to an end in the last couple of months. Okay. Um, but together, they have been invested in active travel. So trying to get a, a total of 10% of the total transport budget yeah. spent on walking and cycling, which yeah. could make a huge difference oh, yeah. to the quality yeah. of the surfaces that we see. As we see here, we're getting yeah, a, little yeah. Bit, yeah. a little bit of user conflict. So yeah, it is all about yeah. getting that best, that, that best design cycling infrastructure in place yeah and hopefully we'll be able to see an example of that yeah yeah in a little minute um, so we do have sort of more segregated infrastructure that's coming in now you'll really see because I'll start to get lost and then that tells you a bit of a picture that we still have a way to go with getting that continuous network oh but right right we're gonna come off in a minute okay um, and we're going we're going to so we're coming off the National Cycle Network Route 75, and we're headed on to Route 1. Okay. Um, and here we are, sort of coming up to, towards Fountain Bridge, Haymarket area. So heading into the, into the city centre now. But, so we'll take a left here. There's some funny bollards that I want to show you. So during lockdown, uh -huh. the Edinburgh City Council and a lot of local authorities in Scotland um, 
put in place just traffic cones uh, sort of along the pavement but into the road space to give more space for people to use the pavements. Right. Um, and this was really popular during lockdown because obviously people were having to keep a wide berth from each other walking around. Right. So it was really necessary to extend out the pavements. Um, and we're going to take a left here. Here you can see them. So they eventually uh, replaced those traffic cones with little um, slightly more permanent bollards here, yeah. yes. Yeah. So this was an initiative called Spaces for People. Okay. So what it's done is it's created some kind of semi-segregated infrastructure for cycling. Yeah. Um, it's not perfect, but it's a start. Right. So this is a bit of a legacy of COVID. Um, obviously, we would, we would want to see more road space uh, given back to pedestrians, to cyclists in a more permanent way. But sure. so this is a kind of an in-between version that we have. So you'll see quite a lot of this in Edinburgh, these little bollards, which yeah. are our sort of COVID legacy. But yeah, I mean, the, these are interim facilities, right? right you know, yeah. materials, they're, they're lighter, quicker, cheaper. Uh, and it is uh, an iteration. You know, the first one was just the, the you know, the, the cones that you put out there. And then now you're able to, you know, do something that's a little bit more robust, but is not the ultimate. That's right, so, and yeah. we'll get there incrementally. So yeah. some of these have been converted into segregated cycling infrastructure. In some places, there's been a bit of pushback and resistance. Sure. So, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see what happens. But well, we're once gonna... you have the real estate, yeah. you know, that's it. You know, it's it. It, it just becomes, you know, the, the motor vehicle drivers, you know, just get used to it, and then they kind of forget what it was like in before. And yeah, you know, next thing you know, this, you know, city can come in and and put more robust protection and separation. And I'll be like, oh, oh yeah, well, it's not that much different than what we had here. Right. <laughs> so. Bit by bit, we'll get there. That's but right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, off to NCN1? Let's do yeah. it, NCN1. Okay. So we're going to do a little cut across here. And we are going to do, oops. This is a bit hairy, this bit. So yeah, as you'll see, there's places in Edinburgh which are a little bit hairy, yeah. um, and this is one of them. That connection between the National Cycle Network Route 75 and 1 at the moment, it's not great, um, but Edinburgh City Council is putting in £17 million worth of investment to be able to connect the two so that hopefully soon we'll have that segregated infrastructure. So we're going to scoot around here. show you some should be it's right behind there so <laughs> that's all you can see right now is that um, barrier right. and so that's a construction site under there ah. um, where eventually we'll have a segregated and a really good quality connection that okay. connects the canal uh, to where we're about to head to next Got so it. yeah so in the works in the works construction. under construction under absolutely construction. yeah yes. Fantastic. <laughs> yep. uh, we're using the terminology NCN what does that stand for that stands for the National Cycle Network um, so originally it really was seen more as a, a network that was suitable for cyclists but it's it's now we're moving towards making it a network for everyone right um, so the brand can be a little bit confusing yeah um, the design standards that we're working to are to make sure that it's accessible for walkers uh, and for wheelers, so wheelchair users, buggy pushers, parents, kids, everyone. Got it. That's it. So, But yeah, the quality of the network does vary. So in places yes. it's really good, in places it's not so good. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So that's the challenge. Right, we're going to cut a right here. Okay. So this is quite a, a bit of a hairy bit, but then we'll see a bit of new infrastructure that's gone in. OK, 
Okay. So that was pretty grim, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm showing you the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> I'm used to it. Yeah. I'm also really keen to show, show you a new bit that's gone in. Uh, now, how do we get there? This bit is a bit, this bit is very hairy. Okay. Are you happy? Oh, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Are you kidding? Let's do it. I'm, I'm good to go. Let's do it. Okay. So. We want to be on that. <laughs> so this is, this is a brand new piece of segregated infrastructure that just got opened this year um, called CC Well. So this runs east to west to providing a city center east to west link. Um, so it was a long time in the making. Um, there were some people who were not keen on it and who were maybe a bit worried about the impact that it's had. But um, so far, it's, it's been a huge success and right. people are really enjoying it. So yeah. So yeah, this is what we're talking about. This is really, this is the, the business. So we've got high quality segregated cycling infrastructure. You see the car that's just stopped for us there. So that's all part of the design features is really to give, um, to make it much easier for walkers and cyclists to sort of have that, have that space in the road. So yeah, great to see a car pause for us there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the drivers are starting to adjust. We just saw two, a nice transit stop there. So we really see this has transformed Absolutely. into a much more welcoming environment. Yeah, it's, it's a two-way cycle track, which is not necessarily the best of the best, but at the same time, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. For Edinburgh, yeah. it's pretty amazing. And Edinburgh's got huge ambitions to um, to really get cars off the road. So it's got a target to reduce vehicle kilometers driven by car by 30% um, by 2030. So that's a, an ambitious target and it's really infrastructure like this that's gonna make that difference. Yeah. Um, because it just, you know, if you're a bit of a nervous cyclist or if you don't really want to be dealing with the traffic on this, you're good. Yeah. I'll also note too the extraordinary uh, stonework and brickwork, you know, pavers that were done for the pedestrian realm there. It was all, all done at a very high caliber. Oh, right, okay. And so it becomes a more comforting environment for them too. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And you can see some more of the paver work here. This is what I'm talking about. And then again, this is a nice raised crossing here from a motor vehicle standpoint. And that creates a slower environment, so cars that approach this intersection here and approach the sidewalk and you know, right. the, the pavement, and as well as the cycle track, slow down. Cyclists are slowed down, drivers are slowed down, and you just take that heat out of that, uh, that sort of user conflict, so yeah. Yeah, and it, it, keeps, it keeps active mobility at this higher level, you know, an elevated level of positioning. Yes. Instead of us going down to the motor vehicle travel lane level, we stay at the, the elevated level of what motorists are used to seeing where pedestrians are. Mm. Those little subtle design features make yes. so much difference yeah. in terms of really giving, giving bikes and, and uh, pedestrians their space yeah. uh, and not seeing a sort of push to the margins, but they're really part of the environment. And, you know, just seeing that driver there slow down for us, yeah. um, that shift in behavior is yeah. exactly what we need to see more of in, in Scotland and, and what we're starting to see very yeah. slowly, but surely with bits of infrastructure like this. And it's worth pointing out too, as we, you know, we have this beautiful facility right behind us, um, is that it's also, again, it's about all ages, all abilities, and so again, people in mobility devices, wheelchairs, also have another piece of infrastructure, a bit of infrastructure that they can use as well. Yeah, that's exactly what it's about. It's about, you know, I think um, traditionally, active travel maybe in the past was seen as something that only a particular type of person would brave. Yeah. And through really inclusive design, 
we can make it such that it really does encourage everybody to have a go and makes people feel that actually this could be for me, this is for me, I will give this a go. I don't have to look or be or behave a certain way, but I feel welcome in this space to, to be to, to get on my bike, so yeah. Very good. good. And we're queued up to get across this monster of a road. Uh, here we are. <laughs> right. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. All let's right, do let's it. go. <laughs> Again, looking back at this little intersection over here. Again, seeing how they did the wiggle there, but it is a raised intersection there. So absolutely brilliant. Okay, folks, that's the end of part two of my ride with Amelia Hanna of Sustrans. Uh, tune in for part three, where we're going to head back out on the trails and out onto the roads and also look at some additional public space installations. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just click on that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell. Well, until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.